in this lecture we're going to have some uh, some revision. Okay. So in a previous lecture we did interpolation in the sense of the Grange interpolation where you put the curve through the data points, and we said really that's not the thing to do because data on, on um, individual data points are always wrong. Data is only correct on average. Okay. There's a technical reason here. You can't even do it with this one. Right, so this is some revision here. So the first question is What do you need to define um, a line? Okay um, One one way that you can define a line is to take two points Okay, so we could take say the point P here and the point Q it has to be a different point and Usually for us we won't be interested in um, a point vertically above another one and that uniquely defines a line, the line that goes through the two of them. And the question is, um, what does it take for some other point to be on the line? So if I take a point up here, what does it take for x, y to be on the line? And the answer is, this will be on the line if the slope between p and it, or q in it is the same as the slope between p and q. The question then becomes um, what is slope? Okay so very very roughly slope is a measure of steepness but it's a particular measure of steepness that uses I mean in one word rise over run. So if I take two points here say take p here and q here and consider the line that goes through the both of them and there is only one we can associate a number um, called a slope that measures the steepness of this line and the steepness is given as the rise over the run so let's see what i mean by rise over the run well what i do is you drop a line perpendicular here and you go across parallel to the x-axis and this is the rise and this is the run and the slope of the line is the rise over the run there's a relationship here uh, with this angle here the rise over the run is the tan so I can say uh, m is equal to rise over run m is this is the slope and then if say if I put an angle here let's say I call it alpha and this has to be a right angle triangle it's the same as the tan of the angle that the line makes with the positive x-axis okay so this point is on this line essentially if uh, say if I take P to be x1 y1 if the slope between P and this point here is equal to M the slope of the line then x y is on the line if it's bigger than the slope that means that the point is up here sorry so I'm saying if if this point is up here the slope between those two is greater than the slope of the line if this point is somehow below the line then the slope between those two points is smaller than the slope of the line so what are we doing here consider again uh, the line defined by the point 2 3 and slope 4 I probably need to go back here to this and we'll do a little calculation down here so coming up here what we want to say is okay so let's say that the slope of this is m okay so for and by the way this is what the equation of a line actually is it's a, a membership card for coordinates a membership cards for points and a point is on a, a, a line or in, in general any curve if it satisfies the equation so when you write, want to write down the equation of a curve, you want to write down some condition that holds exactly when the point is on the curve. So here in particular, we know that x, y is on this line when the slope between uh, these two points is equal to m. Now the slope you can calculate here using coordinates because if q has coordinates, um, have I done this anywhere? No. So if I call this coordinates, um, let's say x2 y2 and let's say p is coordinates x1 y1 
then you can show that the rise is the larger y coordinate take away the smaller y coordinate so it'll be the y2 minus y1 and similar story the run is going to be x2 minus x1 and that's a formula that you're familiar with and if i apply it here i know that xy is on the line if y2 minus y1 in other words y minus y1 divided by x2 which is x1 x minus x1 if that is equal to the slope of the line, which I'm saying is m, and then multiply both sides by x minus x1, because you got a division by x minus x1. If you want to get rid of an, uh, a division by x minus x1, you must multiply. And if two things are equal to it to both of them, so you end up with the equation of a line y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1. So that's uh, what you're familiar with, hopefully. So consider again, um, so this is in particular, say, if you've got a point 0.23 and a slope 4, you can do y minus y1 is equal to m, which is 4, x minus x1. Uh, what we can do is we can actually multiply this thing out, multiply out the, the right-hand side, so you get y minus 3 is equal to 4 by x is 4x minus 8, and add this um, 3 to both sides because it's a minus 3. What's the inverse of taking away 3 is adding 3. So you get y is equal to 4x and minus 8 plus 3 is minus 5. And in fact, what this kind of shows you is that if you have any equation of the form uh, y equal to mx plus c, it is the equation of a line, because what you can do essentially is write c as m times something. Um, um, yeah, well... Uh, Okay, not so simply, but we'll, we'll get to that. Okay, but this is always going to be a line. Um, we can kind of show why. Uh, what you can do is you can show that if you take any two points that satisfy this equation, the slope between them is the same. That's another way of saying what a line is. Um, you're going to know from kind of the, the y minus y1 formula that m is going to be the slope. And the question is, what about the c? So what we're going to show is that what is going on with x equal to 0? So if x is equal to 0, you get y is equal to m times 0 plus c, the y will be equal to c. So c, you might call it the constant, it's not really a good language for it, we'll call it the y-intercept. And now there's uh, three possibilities uh, with m. m could be positive, in which case the line goes up in this sense. y could be negative, in which case it goes down in this sense. And... I think I said y there, but it says m positive, m negative, and then finally m is equal to zero, where you have no slope, no steepness. So m equal to zero, no steepness, flat. m equal to uh, m bigger than zero, positive slope, going uh, goes up, and then finally m is negative, negative slope. Okay. Um, so basically what I want to get at here is that we're going to try and use y to the mx plus c as much as possible. Because um, if you have this, you can do a rough sketch. See where it cuts the y-axis and then just worry, is the uh, slope positive or negative? And similar story, if you have a line in front of you, say with some kind of data, say the slope and the c, you can instantly write down the equation of the line. But really it's more about plotting it. Okay. And I recommend you use y to mx plus c all the time. The derivative. Um, so this is some just background material for something we're going to do later in this chapter. So in first year you develop the idea of a derivative that allow you to study some problems. So the first study uh, thing that you learned about for this is finding um, tangents. Now the question is what is a tangent? So we work with the curve y equal to log of x, which looks something like this. And if we look at the point x equal to 1, we can draw the tangent. Now, you might have been taught something along the lines of, oh, a tangent hits the curve at a single point. That's not what a tangent is. I mean, if that was what a tangent is, sure, wouldn't that be a tangent? That's not what a tangent is. What a tangent is, it's about what's called the local behavior. So local means near a point. So if you zoom in on x equal to 1, like this, what does it look like? Well, it looks like a line. Now, if, if it's still squiggling near x equal to 1, you just have to go closer. And you might have to go closer and closer and closer. 
if you can never stop it squiggling, then you don't have a tangent. But when it does stop squiggling and eventually looks like a line, the line it looks like is what's called a tangent. So this is the tangent at x equal to 1. Now this one does cut it um, once, but it is possible for a tangent to cut a curve multiple points. But the big idea is close to x equal to 1, there's very little between the tangent and the curve. And the tangent approximates the curve near x equal to 1. This here is uh, 1. Um, it turns out that the equation of this tangent is y equal to x minus 1. Now we can just use what we just learned. And this is mx plus c, so the slope of this is 1, and it cuts at minus 1. Okay. Um, now let's, maybe let's examine how good this approximation is. So uh, log 1 on the calculator, well it's going to be 0, but let's say log of um, 1 point, let's say 0, 1. And we'll go to four significant figures. Let's see what we get. So just using the calculator, I get 0 0.009950. Okay, and let's look at, so this is log of x at x equal to 1 versus x minus 1 which is equal to 0 0.01. And there's very little between these two. This is very, very close to 0 0.01. So this is what we mean by when x is close to 1, that log of x is approximately x minus 1. Now the question is, how do you find this tangent line? Now, you, it's easy to find the point uh, because you just pick your x value, substitute it into the, the function, and you have the y value, you have to get the slope. So here it is, to, uh, to find the equation of tangent, necessary to find the slope. In first year you would have done that the slope is equal to the derivative. And this allows you to approximate functions locally by lines. So for example log um, of 1.01 is approximately 0 0.01. Now you can make this approximation better by doing say a tangent parabola and that's going to be the subject of chapter 4 Taylor series. Um, something here that you can think about, if you think about a line well, what's the best line approximation to a line is itself. So the tangent to a line is a line. So if you want to find the slope of the tangent to a line, that should be the same as finding the slope of the line. So finding the slope of a line, well, that's just giving you the m. And that's how you know, for example, that the derivative of 2x plus 3 is just 2. That all fits into that framework. That's one problem you looked at. Um, okay. The other thing that you looked at, and it's what we're going to be interested in, uh, this is why I'm looking at this, is also to find the max or the min of something. Now what we're going to be talking about um, is we're going to be minimizing something. And let me kind of just draw something. So say you want to minimize this function. Now what this is going to actually, going to be in this chapter when we talk about it, this is going to somehow be, um, it's going to be the sum of errors I'm going to write this, now this sum, this is just a sigma, that's a sum, errors. These are going to be the difference between the true values of a, a, a of something and a measured value. And so we're going to look at the sum of errors squared. This little i here, just saying you're adding up different errors. So this is adding up over i, so different errors add up the error squared. We're going to look at a function that's kind of like this. And our job is to find the curve, essentially, that minimizes the sum of these squared errors. This is where, if we look at the name of the section, least squares come from. We want to find the curve that gives you the least squares. So how do you find the minimum? Well, what you do is you find where the slope of the tangent is zero. So min minimizing or optimizing and maximizing is related to tangents. So here you see that the, the derivative at this point is equal to zero, the slope of the tangent. It's a, the, there's no steepness in that line. Um, if you, I, I can kind of argue why this has to be the case. It's a bit easier when I think about the maximum. Think about climbing a hill when you're at the very, very top. It can't, the, the slope can't be positive because if the slope is positive, you're still climbing up the mountain. You haven't reached the max. The, the slope can't be negative at the top of a mountain or top of a hill. 
the slope is negative at the top of a hill, you'd be going downhill. The, 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 the top would be behind you. The slope at the top of a hill, and if you've done every, any hill climbing at all, now mountains are a bit funny because if they're jagged, well, you can't approximate them with lines, but a normal hill is flat at the top. Okay, now here it's going on about the second derivative, which is, I don't gonna, okay, it's not gonna be as important for us, um, but I may as well mention it. So um, we may as well just include it with something else. So basically, yeah, we can talk about something that's actually gonna come into a later chapter. So if I give you this shape, and this shape and imagine these are parabolas so this is kind of like uh, a plus ax squared and this is kind of like a minus ax squared now so this is like say a, a plus x squared minus 3x or whatever but plus x squared will have a u shape a happy shape a minus x squared will have a negative shape now what we're going to learn about in chapter four is that close to um any point. Yes, a function looks like a line if you zoom in close enough, but it also actually looks like a parabola. And you can tell, does it look like this shape or this shape by looking at something? And what you look at is the second derivative. So if I differentiate this once, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to write equals because I'm doing something. I'm going to write this arrow. So how do you differentiate? Fix the constant. And then the derivative of x squared is 2x. And then differentiate again. Now we we've, we've seen that if you've got a multiple of x, the derivative is just the multiple. So we may as well just carry that through here. So a by two is two a, and that is positive. And then this one, if you differentiate it, you'll go the first derivative would be minus a by two x, and the second derivative would be minus a by two, which is minus two a, which is negative. So if you can't remember. Is it the second derivative is positive or negative for a max or a min? This is one way to do it. A plus x squared means a plus second derivative, which means this shape, which means a min. That's if the second derivative, or excuse me, if the first derivative is zero at that particular point. So this one, the second derivative will be negative. Right. I think that's everything we needed by way of revision for going into what we're looking at. So what we're going to look at here is we're going to minimize the sum of the squared errors, the, di the distances between the data points and the curve.